Hey, class. Uh, it's Mr. Dow. I'm going to talk to you a little bit this week about um, what just happened in week number three and where we're going to go in week number four. So let us go ahead and commence with this week's PowerPoint presentation. That's not right. That's not where we're going. We're going here. It's a week four update from Mr. Down Crypto. Uh, I don't have crypto with me right here. I'll see if I can get them later. Um, notice crypto is in something called a bliss state. Uh, this is not. This is not. This is not sleeping. This is a state of um, complete mental relaxation where you can kind of learn actually how to refocus because you're not thinking about yourself or anything. You're just existing. That's something I'll get into a little bit this week, but not right now. I just want to let you know that's what crypto is doing. So our first uh, first message I want to give to you is uh, to always listen to Yoda, the adult Yoda, not the baby Yoda. Um, uh, week number four, we reminds me of something I was told in college and I always ignored. Week number, uh, what I was told when I first started college in freshman orientation was that for every hour you spend in class, you're going to have to spend two extra hours of homework to keep up with college because it's so difficult. And so if you've got a 15-unit semester, you've got to be spending uh, 40 more hours in per week, I don't know, et cetera, et cetera. I just remember when I listened to that, I ignored it because I kept thinking to myself, uh, that's not true. I know there's definitely ways to get through this without spending all that extra time working on it. So, And what I found in college was, yeah, with a lot of classes, that was not true. I found ways to shortcut it. I found ways to kind of like fudge this, fudge this work a little bit. But eventually, in every single college curriculum, you will hit courses where that is completely true. And there's no way to get through the course without putting in all this time. I'm not saying that this is necessarily one of those courses, but this last week and now this week, week number four, it's going to take time outside of beyond just reading and reviewing the material on Canvas. You will have to put time into this. There's just no way around it. So keep that in mind. Don't ignore it like me. Go ahead and just accept it. Uh, you're going to take, it's going to take time because we have multiple submissions you'll have to do. The people that have been doing the work in week three, you've already learned that. Um, the, the sooner you can get to them the doing a, re a revision of something, the faster it will go. I'm pretty quick on any revision work. So just keep submitting through Canvas. Um, the pace does accelerate in the week three and four because not only are we working on on paper number one this week and turning in paper number one, uh, but also um, we are starting paper number two. Not any writing at all, but we do have to start the research and kind of and kind of think about well, what is this paper actually all about? So, a lot of stuff going on. Keep that in mind. What does uh, what does Yoda say? Oh, first remember we are trying to help you. I had to say that first. Um, you know, there are a lot of resources, not just you have resources that are about school and about academics. You know, you've got the Writing Center and Alina and myself um, and you have other things as well. Just remember in all the and all the when you're resubmitting stuff because I'm writing on it, I, I am trying to help you, which sometimes uh, people misinterpret because they say, oh, Mr. Dow's just criticizing, criticizing. I've had people get pretty frustrated with me and say, you just criticize. <laughs> so, yeah, that's. That's really what I do. I just don't have time to write, oh, that's wonderful, and go on and on about how good your submissions are. So I'm more like looking, what's not working? What's not going to help you get an A on this paper? Let's eliminate that. Let's, let's substitute something that will get an A. And I've got more people to look at, so I just want to quickly get to it. I'm hoping that you resubmit quickly, and I'm going to keep, you know, I'll, I put a lot of time into this. So um, don't get frustrated. Or if you do get frustrated, just say, Mr. Now, I need a Zoom conference or something, and, we'll, and we can work it out. But Here's the deal. Fear leads to anger. I just, it's about anger. You know, it's about how do you want to stay. Don't don't get it. Make it personal. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Yoda's right. Listen to Yoda. Let's talk about what's happening in week number four. Then um, first, a reminder of some stuff that's being held over from week number three. Uh, in week number four, you should do it. You're doing the second part of the assignment. You have to get help and show me that you got help twice. And you can get that help from Alina. Uh, per, on a personal, just dropping in or tutoring session or by setting up something at the writing center, a drop in or making an actual appointment there or just leaving your paper, dropping that off at the writing center or getting me to look at some work, some writing work on that you submit through email. But the, um, you do have to show me too, so I, I would assume that work's going to continue during this week. Also, I fully expect to get late work from paper number, from week number three this week. I think uh, sometimes it takes people a while. They get through the, they get through the outline for paper one took a couple submissions to get through the quote usage exercise, took a couple submissions, and then they're not quite, they're not ready yet to do the, the body paragraph work. And so that takes a couple extra days. Totally normal. I totally get it. Just keep working on stuff and keep moving forward. All right. Um, let's talk about what's happening on this week's um, Canvas module. You have an avoiding plagiarism essay. I think it's very helpful to review that. Um, you don't want to fall into the trap of having plagiarized a little bit, and which, which disqualifies your entire paper. So read through that, and you'll see some examples of what I'm talking about, how to avoid it. 
Read about the introduction and conclusion paragraphs for paper one. You do not have to submit those. There's no assignment, but I will look at one. Alina will look at one if you want to show them. I'm just trying to show you here's what's expected of them. 90% uh, of your paper grade is going to come from your theme statement, which would be in the introduction, and those three body paragraphs. There is, you know, the introduction and conclusion are important, but they are not as necessary as those other things, so I don't work on them specifically in class. Go over your paper number one checklist and the grading rubric for that paper. You want to be able to make sure that you can look at your paper and you can check off every single item on that checklist. Because if you can't, you do not want to turn that paper in. It is better to turn in a slightly late paper that meets all the requirements than to turn in a paper on time, but it doesn't meet the requirements. In terms of your grades, keep that in mind. Uh, then finally, if you've done that, you would turn in the paper number one final draft, even if it's late. Again, a slight, a little bit of lateness, but you got everything taken care of is better than turning in a subpar paper on time. Uh, this week, we're gonna, I'm going to present the paper two prompt so you understand here's what the paper is involving. It is a research paper. It will deal with your paper number one story again, but it will not be a literature paper or fic dealing with fiction at all. It's just going to deal with the, what are the issues, the social issues at the heart of that story. For example, if you're doing yellow wallpaper, you're definitely, the social issue is gender identity in, uh, or in America's past. If you're, if you're dealing with, uh, what you pawn, I will redeem, the social issue is, you know, what is the state of Native Americans in modern America, et cetera, et cetera. So kind of keep that in mind. That's where it's going. Um, you, there is an essay on why we have to do research papers at all. It's a short essay. It's entertaining. And it is kind of, kind of gets to the heart of what college is all about. So go, I would read that essay. Um, then you have to find sources. You have to produce something here. Find sources on the social issue or issues of your paper number one story. You don't have to find all the sources. You just have to start. You said, I'm just trying, I'll have a screencast there which shows you how to get started and what places are um, the most, the most uh, useful in terms of looking for those kind of sources. After that is an essay on how to take formal notes from source annotations. Remember, uh, every source you find, if you think you're going to use it, you should annotate that source, which was something we worked on in week three. You should be doing that with all the sources that you think are worthwhile. Um, the formal notes are not the annotation. Formal notes are a step after annotation. The annotation is you just looking at this, this five pages on your story uh, and kind of separating what's possibly useful from what is completely useless and maybe taking a few notes on the side, just remind yourself why you did that. The formal notes would be go through it thinking more about your paper and say, you know, I only want to take quotes out of this now that I think are actually potentially going to get in the paper. And the, and the formal notes should really cover a lot less ground than the annotations do. Um, the idea is that when you write a research paper, you don't write it from the annotations. You don't write it from blank sources. You make an outline from looking at your formal notes. That's it. You really should be able to put the sources away and just look at the formal notes. And that's where you start writing the paper. So keep that in mind. It's part of the process we're, we're teaching this class. Exercise A is you would show me some formal notes using just one source. You'd annotate it and then following the pattern set up um, in this essay, you would go and present, give me a couple of notes I can look at. And then finally, you do the mechanics grammar review exercise on sentence fragments, which every single English class should probably have, right? Again, it's a lot of stuff, so I understand. If you feel, oh, no, I'm overwhelmed. Oh, well, as you should be. It's, uh, I think that that's just normal, given it is a four-unit class, which we're trying to cover in six weeks. All right, so what can you do about that? What about crypto on that bliss day? What can we say? Let's take a look. Um, right here's a couple of final thoughts about this week. One, use your resources. Um, I'm kind of forcing you to use your resources because of that week three exercise. But, you know, you do have other resources besides myself and Alina, the embedded tutor, you also have, there are, you know, if you've got issues with, um, you don't have a real Wi-Fi connection at your house or you don't have the use of an iPad or something, you know, the, the, you do have resources through Citrus College where they will try to address those kind of things, things like uh, food insecurity, uh, home, uh, house insecurity, all those things. There, there are people that can help you and there are ways to find them. So I prompt you, to, I, I, I urge you to use the resources available to you. If you do have everything covered, though, and you're just stressed out by college and COVID and things in general, I just would remind you that, you know, all human beings have a, a bliss state that is achievable. Uh, it's a place where you go in your mind where you are not yourself anymore. You're not hallucinating. You're just not thinking about yourself. Uh, I cannot stress how healthy that is, how refreshing it is. And every single college student in the world should have a way to achieve their bliss state. Now, if you're thinking, oh, that means I'll just sleep more. 
That is not your bliss state. <laughs> sleep is sleep is good, but it doesn't count. If you think oh, I'll just you know I'll just uh, I'll just drink some more, or I'll I'll tell you know I'll, have, I'll chew some more of those uh, pot gummies. Nothing wrong with that, uh, but that's not your bliss state. You know, your bliss state is a very specific thing that happens when your mind gets to this one place. And you, you, I think most commonly people could achieve bliss state through uh, through meditation, you know, if you're taking yoga or doing something like that. But we live in America, and in America, we are so trained to be distracted at all times that achieving a bliss state is very difficult through meditation because you, you have to shut everything out. Uh, what I found is that for most people, it's easier to achieve your bliss state through an activity that allows you to get there. And that's what I prompt you to do this week. Um, uh, you know, I, I, a bliss state is basically like I said, I, for, um, for example, I, pay, I played uh, some form of organized soccer for about 35 years. I had at least one game a week for 35 years. Um, and during those soccer games, I definitely achieved a bliss state. A bliss state is where I was no longer aware of who I am as a person. Or anything going on outside the lines of the field. Every single thought I had during the games was, the ball is there, it's traveling this way, that guy's there, I'm here. We, we, then just always doing that with my mind. Um, what I would found after playing soccer was that uh, my body was rested and my mind was completely rested. I was so much better able to focus after that. You don't have to play soccer to achieve this. Um, I've seen people, and I've done it myself, where people have done it by playing an instrument, um, People have done it by, uh, you know, surfing is a great one. Running is good. Um, uh, cooking is, is great. Anything where you, you just, where you become the activity is healthy for you. Even you just do it where you're not yourself for a while. And it's crucial in college you have something like that. Um, reading can do it as well. I, but th so I'm just trying to say there are things you can do to sort of try to fight back against what is a necessarily understandable level of stress that we are all going through. So... Um, so I just want to point that out to you. You should read this little thing talking about the different waves that your brain produces and which waves are helping you be con when you're conscious and which waves are helping you to achieve a state of kind of like subconscious relaxation, which is where you want to go. All right, let's talk about, let's get back to what I was talking about with, uh, with the class in general, though. I'll go big again. So there it is. That's what we're doing with this week. Um, let me see if I can get crypto to say something. Crypto. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. You have anything to say to the students, huh? <laughs> okay all right that's it for me and crypto this week we will be back next week and give you more help on college